and tell us a little bit about how you've been developing prayer spaces and the story of the impact that that's had on the academy and Hull. It'd be great to hear your story. Okay, thank you. Um, good morning. Um, I've just been a chaplain at Archbishop Centimere Academy just for six months, so I was quite newly appointed, and I knew when I got there that two weeks into my arrival there, we were going to be running a prayer space in the academy. Um, I'd never done one before, and I didn't know very much about it. But thankfully, Laura here, who is my colleague, who also works in the academy and who is an Eden team leader in our community, did all the preparation for it. So I've actually asked her to say a bit about that, and then I want to talk about how it's kind of led us forward. So I'll hand over to Laura. So yeah, I live on the estate where the school is, being part of an Eden team there, and we have an amazing opportunity to go into the school and to do loads of fantastic uh, things, including supporting the chaplaincy work that happens there. So I'd pre worked with a previous chaplain, we'd done a prayer space, a smaller one just for year seven, and the chaplain had left, so there was a bit of a gap, and I thought, with knowing that Anne was coming, it would be a really great way to, for her to get to know the students, but also to, to use the prayer spaces again. So we did one at Easter, uh, so over the two weeks that it was running, we had the whole of year seven to ten through the chapel, which was about a thousand students. Um, they each did about 35, 40 minutes as part of one of their RE lessons. So it was a bit crazy, um, but it was, it was fantastic. And we kept having to extend the prayer wall. So the, we you know, put it up on one wall and then extended it and extended it and extended it. And so it was just a real kind of we saw a real outpouring of students' emotions and feelings, and it gave them a place to really express how they were feeling. And so many of them had, have so much stuff going on that they don't talk about and they keep bottled up. And we really saw them express that in different ways, and whether that was, you know, crying out to God for help. You know, they were really honest in the prayers. And it was all based around different parts of the Easter story. And so it was really interesting for them to, to see them engage with what actually happened at Easter and to kind of get rid of a few myths of what they actually thought Easter was about. Um, but it was a real privilege over the two weeks to see so many students go through and really engage with God, even though they weren't really expecting to. Thank you, Laura. Going on from that, uh, for me, it was an amazing insight into the lives of the young people that I was there to serve. And um, perhaps the biggest theme that came out of the whole experience for me was um, the level of bereavement that many of them had experienced from grandparents. And so that was a really important... It was, it was quite selfish, really, because I learned so much about the students in, the, in that fortnight. But the other thing that I was really challenged about was that um, we needed to make sure that the, because we've got a chapel and it's, it's designa designated as that and it's a lovely space, that that would always be available as a prayer space for staff and students. So ever since we did the prayer space at Easter, it's always had activities set up, prayer activities ever since then. And since we've arrived back in September in the new term, we've been trying to really encourage students to come and, and use those things. And they are doing, it's really surprising um, there's a real openness and a longing that many of the students have, even though they have no church background at all, to, to come and kind of express themselves and find God. And uh, they don't even have the language to, <laughs> to express what's going on, really. But um, there's been a few examples of students who've come and maybe lit a candle or written a prayer or um, prayed for the world or all sorts of different things. So we're just going on, really, with that and trying to find ways of ensuring that that space is there all the time for everyone. Thank you, that's fantastic. And hopefully today we'll be hearing lots of other stories and, and talking together and sharing our, our ideas and our thoughts about how we can continue to provide that spiritual life for young people in our schools. So thank you, Anne. 